and they fold up this way. Ooh. See, if you were sitting in your desk and you stood up, your legs would help push this up. I'm a bit too big for it to work. But it would push up automatically if you were going to do the Pledge of Allegiance or something of this nature. And you can stand up to or you can stand up to the Pledge of Lessons, right? Yeah. Here's, here's one up here, too. They fold it up like this. So it's easy to show. And so Uriah Smith was not just an editor. Uriah Smith was an inventor. And he had nine patents with the U.S. Patent Office. And this is one of them. Now, I mentioned to you when we were in Ellen White's bedroom. I mentioned to you, yeah, but let's let Adelia show us how it's done. Okay, now you want to stand up right where you're at? And, well, a little, a little small for it to happen, yeah. In any case, you might have to use a little of your effort, too, just like you stand up and like push with your legs or something. But that desk is different from some of these others. So they don't go up as easy as they don't actually uh, work that way. But Uriah Smith, um, we, we talked about in Ellen White's bedroom how there were many Adventist pioneers who were handicapped in some way. Uriah Smith was among them. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Uriah Smith only had one leg. We don't exactly know how old he was, but he was a young boy. Whenever he had some sort of disease or illness, in his leg, and it had to be cut off. And guess what the doctor's name was? I always get a kick out of this. His doctor's name was Dr. Twitchell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke on his name. And that's probably not very kind to him. But it reminds me of three Stooges jokes and stuff like that. Where you, where you have dentists who are named I Yank and you pull and things like this. So anyhow, Dr. Twitchell, and he, he had to saw off Uriah Smith's leg. And think about that. He was out, and they would probably give him a shot of whiskey, Tell them to bite out on a piece of leather strap and then mm, go to work, cutting that leg off. Well, Uriah Smith became a prominent leader in the church and a prominent citizen in Battle Creek. And for many years, ever since he was a boy, he walked around with a wooden pegged leg. Kind of like a pirate, I guess, as we often imagine it. His first invention was patented in 1863. What time was that? How, why is that critical? During the middle of the Civil War. And during the Civil War, there are many thousands of people who are losing their arms and legs in battle. And so Uriah Smith patented his first invention, which happened to be a prosthetic leg in 1863. Now, because of the timing of that invention, he was able to make a small fortune on that invention, uh, and he was able to buy his first home in town. But there was another reason why he patented a leg. He wanted to be able to kneel down Hmm. And with a wooden peg leg, you couldn't do that because it didn't bend at the knee. And so Uriah Smith's invention bent at the knee. Hmm. Now, he's not the first and not the only one to do that, but nevertheless, his invention was unique enough to be patented. Well, he patented many other things. He patented a train, uh, train chairs, like for the train cars, that could switch to where if you wanted to sit and face the direction the train is moving, or the opposite, you could do that. You could choose to like switch the chairs to where you could sit and have conversations back and forth. So if, if I wanted to, I could switch the chair this way, and I could sit, and I could look at my daughter, and we could talk as we're going down the train. He invented those. He also invented a pair of glasses. He invented a toy gun that could shoot pellets for whatever reason. I don't know if it was a toy or if he was uh, Stan Hickerson, who was a friend of mine. He kind of joked and said, maybe he was uh, invented it to shoot rats in the office. I mean, who knows? In any case, he invented one of those. And several other things. I, I, don't, I don't have a list. I, uh, a method of shorthand was another one. But uh, he invented many, many things, and he wasn't alone. Many Adventists, as it turns out, invented things. Um, and I could go on and on and on about that, but I probably shouldn't. What we're here for is to talk about Adventist education. And we thought it was Goodwill Harper Bell because Goodwill Harper Bell is the one who gets the education work started here in Battle Creek, right? Mm -hmm. He comes in 1868, I believe it's the year, to the Battle Creek Sanitarium. It was called the Western Health Reform Institute at that time. And he's sick, he's not an Adventist. But he's there at this place, and as he's there, he's introduced to Adventists, and he starts to get ideas, and he ends up converting and becoming an Adventist. And so, as a result of that, the Adventists find out, oh, you're a teacher. Wow. This is perfect timing, because all of our kids are getting to the age where they need to be in school. And so, they decided to negotiate a deal with him where he could teach their children. And so, in 1872, Google Harper Bell opens up what is called Bell's Select School, and that is the first time that you have an organized Adventist school 
That is, not, in other words, not a private school just meeting in people's homes. They were doing that since the 1850s. But there, Bell, Bell Select School continues on, and uh, all the Adventists that you know, Willie and Edson White are going there, John Hardy Kellogg goes through this as well, and by 1874, they decided to expand it into Battle Creek College. And that, that institution later moved in 1901 down to Marion Springs, Michigan, and it's renamed uh, Emmanuel Missionary College. And in 1960, when the seminary is brought there, it becomes Cambridge University, which is where I work to this day. So that's the beginning of the work, and it was done right here in this town, in this community. Um, this school building that you're in was not an original Adventist building. This was a, a, an original schoolhouse in Battle Creek, but it was called the Kane School. And they moved it from across town. It was donated by the Historical Society of Battle Creek. And so that is why it's here, and it's a, it's a place that we can depict and talk about uh, Adventist education. Any questions about that? Everyone knows what makes Adventist education unique in a nutshell? Do we focus on just book learning? Just the, just the thing that you can, just the knowledge that you can gain? No, Adventist education is intended to be holistic, where you're, in, you're healing to the body and the mind and the spirit. And that's the whole point that makes it unique and different. All right. Any more questions? We probably should go since we're running late already to the Parkville Church. And we can end there and talk about some fascinating things that happen next. Is that okay? Okay.